Hey, what's good with you guys? Welcome back to The, the Sims Episode 2. Well, hope you enjoyed the uh, last series. Or last episode, I mean. And yeah, so this is where this is where the game gets kind of complicated. And I could never get past this part because I didn't understand how to get promoted. So, this motherfucker right here is named Dudley. Stupid name, I know. No offense to anybody out there named Dudley, but he's just a real piece of shit of a person. Hey, it's Dudley. Your dad could have made it so, like, listen up. I trashed the place party. You can stay here for free and fix it up. It seems pretty cool. Maybe later you can move in with me. You meet all my friends. Fuck you and your friends. I hate friends. So, from my understanding is, well, as a kid when I remembered, you pretty much have to uh, fix the place up and get promoted. And since I became a uh, military member, I'm a private, I guess. I have to become like a general or something. Yeah, he completely trashed this place. And you just got to sweep it up, clean it up, fix the walls. And it, it's a... I was so... I didn't know what to do. I just remember being so stuck. Like, stuck as hell in here. I, I mean, pretty much I decided that this is the game. This is it. Like, I'm never going to pass it because I don't know what the hell to do. And my parents, or anybody in my family, really never knew that I played this game. Because, you know, I was kind of embarrassed to tell them about it. Because, you know, it wasn't a game for kids. And, you know, sweeping up, you know, clean, done, nice and dandy. You, uh, yeah, you just gotta fix it up. And he, I don't know, it, it's so funny. He's like, what the fuck did he do to this place? It's fucking trash. And here comes all these people. Here comes my mom, stepmom, and that some weird emo guy. Like, nah, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to clean this shit up. Oh, look at that dirty fish tank. Oh, this. Yeah, yeah there's the, uh, there's that table I was telling you guys about. That, uh, changes your appearance. I'm not gonna change it because I look fantastic. Alright. Well, while I'm doing this, I guess I can tell you guys a little story about my middle school days. Here's another one for... Another one for you guys. So... Uh, so I talked about Roxy and Jennifer, but mostly Roxy because she was the actual crush. Jennifer was just that girl I would have wanted to <laughs> three, three, uh, three way with. So there was another chick that I was really into, and uh, she was just as cute, just as cute as uh, Roxy. But it was more like Roxy was sexy, and this new girl, her name was Samantha. She wasn't really new, but she was cute. Like, oh, man. I don't know what it was. So, to describe how she looked, she was real skinny. You know, no surprise there. I like skinny girls. She was real skinny, wore big-ass sweaters like every other fucking girl. Big-ass sweaters and, you know, um, wore big sneakers. She was a cool chick. She was real smart. Oh, and uh, her hair was uh she was it was a light brown but it was really long and sadly i can't really remember her face i actually remember a different girl replacing her face i don't know why until this day i want to see these girls again my god i have a lot of crush I'm, i think i'm gonna tell all the crushes i've had in this game before anybody gets all like bro what you what you drool it over that's pretty weird they're it was middle school. I was this, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't get creepy with it. I mean, I know I sound a little creepy with it, but I'm just telling the story. So, relax with that shit. <laughs> so, Samantha. That was her name, Samantha. Long brown, and her hair was actually long all the way to, like, her lower back. Close to, uh, you know, where the sun don't shine. Why did I say it like that? It's, <laughs> I'm trying to be PG-13. So, okay, I never really talked to her. I just admired her from afar, like, every time... She got up, I would, you know, I saw her, and I just, you know, the, you know, boys, we think about having families with them and shit, <laughs> think about our lives with them. So, she, yeah, I knew she was really smart, because there used to be, uh, there used to be, like, uh, the, the classes would brag about, you know, they would put on the wall and brag about who was really good at what they were doing, and, you know, it was like a motivational thing. So stupid. This broken-ass computer. <laughs> So, Samantha didn't even know I existed, sadly. Until fucking Ryder, man. Ryder was the homie. He was the wingman. 
But it, okay, so Samantha was in only two classes that I ever seen her in, and I didn't exactly sat next to her or sat near her. A lot of these classes we didn't have normal desks. We all had those big, huge tables where like four to five people could sit at that table, and it was a round shape or a pear shape. Or not just pear shape, uh, what's that shape? Uh, it looks like a banana almost, but thicker. Oh, who's that bitch? Fixing a ghetto ass TV. Look at this. <laughs> so, so yeah, so Samantha didn't even know I existed. But there were times where I think she caught me looking at her. And I'd look away like a little bitch. And my friend Ryder and another friend named Clayton. Was it Clayton? Yeah, it was Clayton. He had big ass afro. He was he was a cool dude, too. Uh, uh, he was, uh, you see all the poop in the toilet? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even notice that. Shit. So, anyways. So, what, uh, this was still during the Roxy and Jennifer uh, series. Because, uh, you know, every class is like a different world almost, you know. Roxy and Jennifer don't exist in classroom A12. They only exist in classroom D4. <laughs> so, it w during the end of the school year, they uh, threw a celebration for the sixth graders. Mm -hmm. And since I was a sixth grader, supposedly about to be a seventh grader, which wasn't true. Yeah, yeah. They, they're across the street from the school. There will used there will used to be an arcade, and those. Well, actually, it didn't. It's not an arcade anymore. It's a bowling alley now, but it had arcades there. So the schools were like, okay, well, it's the end of the semester. Good job on your tests and stuff like that. And actually, <laughs> I know I said I failed every class, but they were letting students go ahead and do it anyways because it was the end of the semester kind of thing. So we ended up going to the uh, bowling alley out there. And I was going through a street dance phase. I know that's kind of weird to think about. But uh, it wasn't... I wasn't exactly dancing everywhere. I just it, I did it privately, you know, because I wanted to I wanted to learn how to do break dancing. But I did it. I refused to go to school for it. So I wanted to learn like myself, right? And I'm we're going to the bowling alley, and it's across the street from the school, like literally across the street. Maybe you got to cross two streets just to get there. Huh? And they're not busy highways either. They're just like oh, little neighborhoods. So we go there. It's a class of like 50 kids. Oops. Like 50 of us including. In fact, there was a lot of people there that I knew. There was actual legitimate twins that went to our class. And they never spoke to me. Never spoke to me. They were real assholes towards me. But that day, they were really nice to me for some reason. And I was kind of like, ooh, oh, Taylor and Taylor, whatever the fuck their name was. Woo. But anyways. So we're at the bowling alley, and it's uh, it, it's Cosmic Night or some shit like that. Or Cosmic Bowl. In cosmic Bowling. There we go. That's what it was called. It was like a dance party. And me, Ryder, Clayton, and some other dude. We didn't even know him. He was just part of the group because it was a group of four. Which was surprisingly weird, to be honest. Group of four? Huh. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. But anyways, group of four, so we're hanging out at the bowling, and we're just playing bowling, having fun. They're playing all kinds of music. It, it looks like a disco party. It almost looks like a rave in there, if you've been to raves. I don't like raves. They fucking stink. So the, and, um, and Ryder was like, bro, bro, you gotta talk to Samantha, dog. You gotta talk to her, dog. Like, Bro, you be a bitch if you don't do it, man. Come on. I was like, I can't, man. I just can't. I thought I couldn't do it. She's so pretty and she's cute. And look at me. Fucking ugly as fuck, man. I didn't even spike up my hair today. He's like, doesn't matter, man. Doesn't matter. He's like, remember what you taught me? Because he had a crush on a girl, too. And I ended up telling him, like, you know, tell her how you feel, man. Tell her. And he got with her. He fucking got with her. They were only together for like a week, but he got with her. She was a cool chick too. There was something going on between us as well, but it wasn't serious. She thought it was, she said it was a joke, but anyway, that is a story for another time. So Ryder was just like encouraging me, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Then um, uh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I chickened out. I chickened out. I I said I was gonna go do it, but I ran away to go play in the arcade. And he walked in there. 
He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I couldn't do it, right? Or I just couldn't do it. He goes, what's the worst that could happen? What do you think that's the worst? That this was before I found out I failed every class. So if I knew that I was... If I knew that I wasn't going to stay in that school, I would... Oh, my God. If I knew I wasn't going to stay at that school because I failed every class, I would have fucking went ballistic. I would have done things I couldn't do. And, you know, this was before the... Well, no, the internet did exist, but my mom refused to get us internet because she was afraid that I would go on sketchy websites and child predators would take me and my brother. So... That was uh, out of the question, but yeah, there was no internet. There was really no MySpace or any of that shit. The internet was just for really rich old people. All we had were telephones. And there, nobody had a cell phone yet. Cell phones didn't. Or actually, no, there were cell phones, but there was only a select group of kids who had them. But, you know, they were number pads. They, there was no YouTube. There was no Google. There was nothing. You just had a cell phone. And you pray to God nobody texts you. Because your parents would fucking rip. I know this because my mom gave me a phone one time. And she's like, don't you dare text or call anybody because the minutes will go up. Like, one minute was like $5. So, imagine spending 25 minutes talking on the phone. You know how us kids, we talk on the phones all day. So, yeah. Ryder told the... Uh, told me like hey bro i'm gonna go talk to her for you i was like no Ryder, don't do it bro please don't do it he goes no nah, man it's gonna happen i'm gonna go talk to her You're my buddy You're my best friend you know like you were there for me for in, in, the, in our oldest summer school i go i was there for you bro you were there for me i was there with my friend dario and dario was a second grader who was in my fourth grade class because we were special ed kids he 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 spoke Spanish and he didn't. He had a speech impediment. He didn't know how to talk. Like he was, you know. You know, I wonder how he's doing now. Him and his cousin Carlos. They were my best. They were like my best friends. They were the homies. So when I went to summer school in a totally different school, you know, it's like going to school at a different school. It's like being in a gang. You're you're in, you're in territory you don't know about. It's like fuck. I don't know anybody here. It's, it's a scary thought. Dario was my only homie. Even though he was a little kid, I treated him like my little brother. We played together and we just, you know, played handball together. He was a cool kid. He didn't know how to talk, but yeah. So, so Ryder got that wrong. He hung out with us, <laughs> but whatever. So Ryder, he goes up to Samantha. He goes up to her and keep in mind, the music's already playing. Sorry, so it's a cos cosmic bowling. The lights are on. The music is going he brought samantha over and bro was like dog samantha wants to see your moves excuse me because you know dancing was kind of a thing back then sort of but i was the only student that claimed that i know how to break dance the other dancing i'm not sure what it was but i think that you got served bullshit out I I wait no that was break dancing wasn't it i don't know he told me she wants to see your moves I'm all like, okay, okay. I know a couple street dancing moves. I know the worm. I know a backspin. I sort of know the moonwalk. And I could, and I, I will do that the legendary head spin. And uh, I, I nailed it, dude. I nailed it. I screwed up on the moonwalk. Which you think, what the fuck? But yeah, I screwed up on the moonwalk. And I, I did well on the worm because the worm was one of my favorite break dancing moves. But the head spin was... Ooh, the head spin. I could have fucking killed myself that day. Broke my fucking neck. Because if you've seen a fat kid spin on his neck... <laughs> I wasn't fat. Like, I wasn't 100% fat. Ryder was fatter than me. I'm going to just leave that out there. Ryder was so fat that his ass crack was always showing. But he was healthy enough to run. Actually, Caesar. Remember the guy Caesar? The guy who grabbed every girl's butt that I told you guys about? That fool was fat. That was a fat kid. <laughs> like that was Homer Simpson fat. We were like, we were chubby. You know, we were healthy, but you know what I mean. So we were thick kids. We looked like me and Ryder could essentially we looked like football players, like Bobby Hill status almost. So, but Caesar, Caesar was like 
horror family guy, Peter Griffin. So anyways, so he's, she's checking out, and she's all, and she just kind of like nodded her head with her wide eyes like, wow. She goes, that's really cool, uh, Mox. She knows my name. I, I, I bitched. <laughs> I bitched. I was like, she knows my name. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. And I wanted to talk to her. This is where it got sad, too. I'm trying to talk to her, and all these other guys were around her, Everybody, like, because she was part of a really, like, not a popular clique, but she knew people that were pretty little popular with amongst each other, and they didn't like me. Mm. Obviously, they didn't like me. I don't know. Well, I could think of many reasons why they didn't like me. I was a nerd. I was a dork. You know, mm. I looked weird. You know, because, you know, anybody looks weird with a fucking mohawk. And there were there were gangs at that school, but they weren't as crazy as they were at my other school. My other school was filled with gangs. This was just like a basketball gang. They thought they were all mad, but they were fucking nobody. Cause, cause I had a cousin, an older cousin, who used to pick me up from school. And or not, he 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 picked me up like maybe once or twice, but he snuck over the fence. Because he was in high school, so he snuck over the fence and he hung out with me. Because uh, there was rumor that I was getting bullied and he knew who I was because I was the only kid in the school with a mohawk. And he was just all like, hey, you alright, dude? I was like, yeah, yeah, he's fooling. He's like, you want anybody to fool? He's, like, he's just like, you want me to fuck somebody up? I'm like, nah. But one kid was talking smack to me and this happened to be one of Samantha's friends. And he's all like, that fool's bothering you? That ugly ass motherfucker? Like, We'll have a talk with him. He talks to him, and he his name was Dave Vaughn. His name was Dave Vaughn, ugly motherfucker too, ugly as fuck. He had an ugly hair, he had ugly lips, he had an ugly fucking, he was an ugly ass dude. But he thought he was hard. He thought he was the hardest fool at the school. But not uh, until my homie showed up, hopping over the fence, and he's just like, "You'll fuck with my homie." You understand? And he, they start. He was just representing what hood he was from. And Dave, Dave all was scared. <laughs> I don't remember his name was Davon or Trayvon. I can't remember. But yeah, he was scared. He never fucked with. He never looked at me again. Like he's like, hey, he just saw you talking shit to me because we were hanging out by the basketball courts. I was only there to talk to my friend to get close to that one girl. So, so at the bully alley, right? I'm there. Trying to talk to Samantha. I'm standing there awkwardly too. Like I only and the only people that were talking to me were the twins, Taylor and, and Taylor, whatever the hell their names were. I only knew Taylor, and I'm sitting there just talking to fucking Taylor the whole time. I'm talking to her, and I'm sitting here going, "These fucking white girl twins are talking to me. Why are they talking? And they're so nice to me." They were super nice to me. Everybody was super nice to me that day. I couldn't tell if maybe it was because, you know, it's the end of the semester and we're all maybe maturing and realizing that, hey, Mox isn't so bad. Sure, he's from another world, but he's not so bad. No, and we started vibing. This was before, like, this was before I started really not drifting away from the whole hip hop genre and stuff like that. We were talking about music we liked. I'm like, I'm talking to the wrong chick. I want to talk to Samantha. And her fucking long hair. But no, she was surrounded by all these people that didn't like me. And I just didn't want to start problems. I didn't want to get embarrassed. But here I am, talking to the twins. Taylor and Taylor, whatever their names are. And they, they, one, one of the twins wore glasses, which was Taylor. The other one didn't wear glasses. And the other one was a bit more shy, but Taylor was more out there. So... And a writer comes up from behind me, and he's like, "Bro, are you talking to the twins?" I was like, "Yeah, they're very nice." He's like, what? You're talking to the twins? What happened to Samantha? I was like, "I can't get close to her. I can't even talk to her, dog. She's fucking like, dude. I can't even get near her because all these other guys. Was, Fuck those other guys, man. I go, I'll cause a distraction." I was like, "Nah, nah, nah, nah. nah. It's cool. It's cool. I'm talking to. I'm talking to the twins. You know, I'm talking to the twins." And he's all like, "Bro." Are you trying to get with both of them? I'm all like, you think I can do it? He goes, no. 
I don't think you could do it, but it's kind of cool that you're trying. Damn, dude. He's like, wait till I go tell Clayton. Wait till I go tell Zach. And I was like, don't tell them. I go, don't fucking tell them yet. And they're like, oh, don't tell them yet. <laughs> fucking Dudley. We're going to the chat. Fuck you, Dudley. Get the fuck out of here. And yeah, like... <laughs> this shit was crazy. And I'm like, oh, man. Nothing happened, by the way. It's just... It looked cool that this fucking kid with a mohawk, <laughs> fucking dragon head, is talking to two twins. They were pretty popular. Not popular, popular, but they were pretty. You know, a lot of people found them very pretty. I mean, obviously, people are fucking weirdly attracted to twins. I personally thought they were lame, but they were so nice to me that day. And, you know, it made me completely forget about Samantha. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh shit, that was so sad. It was one of the. Uh, I wish I could go back. To be honest, fuck. I wish I could go back and just see like what what would have happened if, right? <laughs> but sadly, time travel will never exist. Although there is rumor that you can't go backwards, you just can't go forward. But eh, I care. So yeah, that was the end of that saga. <laughs> yeah, that was the end of that. I. Made it with the twins. And twi <laughs> I was lost in powers for a moment there. Oh shit. The uh. This is what disappointed me the most though. Was because. I can't remember what Samantha looks like. From her face. Because I remember another girl. When I see her face. And her name was Alyssa. And I remember her last name. Till this Number three is very important to you right now. Those fucking... This was another thing about this game that was terrifying. This was another thing that was terrifying. We'll talk about Alyssa in a minute. This game fucking gives you prank phone calls where they would say shit like those flashing lights were just a warning. There will be other uh, things happening. And your character goes, Huh? I shit you not. I fucking was so scared that I, I sold the windows. I sold the doors every night. It was terrifying to think something's out there watching you in the fucking game. And eight, oh my god, aliens scare me. Okay, aliens scare me. Now, before I, Alien vs. Predator, yeah, they're scary. Those guys are scary. Xenomorphs and the Predators, those are scary. But I am way more scared of the aliens from Signs or Dark Skies. Something intelligent that can fuck with you is way more terrifying than something that's hunting you. At least in my opinion. But yeah. So this game, because of the piano and because of the weird way you look overhead of the character, it almost feels like you're the alien and you're watching them. And when you hear all these weird noises in the game, oh, it's terrifying. So you get the prank phone calls in the game is pretty unsettling. But anywho, uh, I can say. So I had a I had an elementary school crush when I was in the fifth grade, and she was a fourth grader. This is probably one of the saddest stories I'm gonna tell. <laughs> so her name was Alyssa, and her last name was I'm just gonna put R. I don't know why I said that, but whatever. She was, believe it or not, a redhead. She was the only. I think maybe because she was young, her because her hair looked brown, but it also looked red. And, and you know, me as a as a young lad, I was like, oh, she's so pretty, she's so pretty, and she never spoke. She never said, a, oh, 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 I, oh, I leveled up. Awesome. I never. So we got to get promoted. When we get promoted, we'll be able to move out of this place. Look at me, Sergeant Mox. Ready for war against them damn aliens. So sorry. <laughs> so okay. So Alyssa. Alyssa was like the most beautiful girl to me. She was so pretty that I think about her every time like rap music came on about uh, love. You know, like have you guys heard uh like Ja Rule, for example, when Ja Rule would sing songs with uh, Ashante? Or was it Ashante? 
or when Fat Joe sung songs with girls, and or you know, I would think about, or you know, what I mean, what's that one song? Uh, was it a Shanti? Ja Rule sings that song that goes, um, oh my god, I can't remember. It's the way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk. I'm real. There we go. The way you stand, the way you look, the sky, the way you smile. <laughs> that was a good song. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Ja Rule and I think uh, Ashante. Yeah, it, uh, so I, that was my song for her. Like that, that song. Every time it played on the radio, because my aunt, she, my aunt used to listen to, you know, a lot of that music when we, she would, my aunt always took me to school. And, you know, one of, my aunt was like one of the coolest ladies out there. So she always took me to school. And, uh, yeah, she, uh, every, that, a lot of times those songs kept playing on the radio. And I would always think about, I would always think about Alyssa. And you know who I used to dress like in high school? In high school, <laughs> in elementary, I used to dress like Claude Speed from Grand Theft Auto Three. I shit you not, I wore army pants every day, and I wore a black sweater or uh, a uh, vent. What is it? Windbreaker jackets, whatever. I always wore it like I always dressed like Claude Speed. And yeah, so Alyssa never talked. Never talked. But I used to make her laugh. All the time I made that woman laugh. All the fucking time. I always made her laugh. I was the silly. I was a class clown, dude. I always made There was another girl who had a thing for me. And I'm actually kind of upset that I didn't. It's because I was shallow. I was a shallow kid. And um, I really wish I kept in touch with those people. To be honest. Because one of my bestest, bestest friends ever. He, he was in the same class as me. His name was Jesse. Homeboy. And what's funny is I ran into him years later. Like 10 years later. And we were all like, what the fuck? I can't believe it. You're here. And this was, I didn't even have a cell phone. And my mom was kind of an asshole that day. But another story for another time. The So what happened is I'm out here trying to make a little laugh. But she had a friend of hers named Garrett. Those two were inseparable. They were like the best of friends. They were basically. Let's put it this way. If it was an anime. You guys would ship Garrett and Alyssa. Because they were friends. Only he hers talk. And I was like what the fuck. I hated Garrett. I fucking hated him. He looked like Obi-Wan Kenobi from fucking The Phantom Menace. Episode 1. <laughs> but I tried so hard to get Alyssa's attention from from playing dodgeball and trying to hit her but not hit her hard from because class used to make us do Valentine's notes I would look for the best Valentine and I'd ask my mom can she get me more of like a certain I want to show her that I really like her blah, blah, blah. and my mom's telling me that no son She's too young. She's not going to understand that. I'm like, I don't care. I fucking threw a fit. I was like, I want her to like me. <laughs> so my mom's all like, son, when you guys get older, when you guys get older, she'll realize it. I'm like right now, you guys are just kids. So I don't care. Because as a, as a kid, I was, well, I wasn't mature, but I thought maturely. I mean, I shit you guys not. And, and this is not to brag. This is just being real. My first kiss. I was fucking like five years old when I got my first kiss. I'm not lying. I really was. My mom had a friend who lived behind our house. Well, I used to live with my grandma sometimes. Because my mom worked double shifts. Just a little side story. My, my mom worked double shifts. So I was always at my grandma's house. And fortunately, the school where I used to go to. It was up the street in that neighborhood. God, it was a beautiful neighborhood. And... So I hardly ever saw my mom, but when my mom showed up, I spent a lot of time with her, but she also spent time with her. This was when we used to hang out outside. Oh, good times, good times. So, and my mom had a friend who had a daughter. I can't for the life of me remember my that girl's name. And she was my first kiss. She really was. Because this is, my first kiss happened, oh my God. 
I could Google it right now and show you that not the where it happened. Oh no, that tree is gone. Never mind, I can't show it to you guys. Maybe I will. There's a tree. That where it happened next door was my best buddy Jason's house. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna show that stuff. But that tree, my mom was standing there by her Camaro talking to her mom, and this little girl's all like, "So we're we're we were playing dinosaurs for a bit, and then she's like, come here.' She sat by the tree, oh, so our parents wouldn't see us. And you know, my our parents were like a teenagers. My mom had me when she was like twelve. So, uh, yeah." And she's all like, hey, maybe we should kiss. Huh? And this bitch grabs my fucking face and I shit you not. This little fucking girl grabbed my little boy face and put her mouth all over my fucking mouth. Her tongue went in my mouth and everything else. Now that I, as an adult, I realized, oh my God. This bitch was around fucking bad people. Maybe not her mom. But, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we grew up in pretty bad places, right? I mean, the only way I knew about sex and kissing was movies. It was movies and TV. That's the only shit I knew about it. But oh, my, my mom's friend, she lived in the gang life. So there must have been shit going on that, that they saw they weren't allowed to see. So that was my first kiss. I got tongued by... <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe that. I was like seven years old. I was like seven or six, and she was the same age. It was crazy. And that shit kept happening until we were like 10. Until she just disappeared. I never seen her again. I think they moved, actually. I think they moved, to be honest. And so, and the reason why I tell that story is because as a young kid, I was kind of developing early, if that makes sense. I was developing early. I wanted kisses. I wanted hugs. I, I wanted things at a young age from girls. And it, it went to the point where I wanted it from any girl. <laughs> any grown-ass woman, teachers, you name it. <laughs> but every time I pictured sex... Every time I pictured sex with a woman... <laughs> as a fucking little kid... I always pictured myself in fucking... In whitey tidy underwear with Power Rangers on. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? Oh shit! Until this day, I think like that. Like, ugh. why do I imagine myself as this dorky ass kid with striped t-shirts like Charlie Brown? Ah oh, man, I I lived a fucked up life. I was times changed. Obviously, this is this was a long time ago. 70s shit, you know, 80s, 20s, 60s. And yeah, like I was a fully developed kid. I wanted kisses, I wanted sex, I wanted all this from, from girls in my class. And it's just, I never did it, obviously. I never have, because I didn't know what sex was. I thought it was kissing without shirts on. That's all I thought it was. And me and my homie Jesse, Jesse was a pervert, but he got girls. He used to get girls left and right. In fact, his girl was the was a big bitch. <laughs> she was a big bitch. She was cute. She was pretty though. But she was big. Like she was the tallest girl in our whole school. And Jesse was this skinny ass motherfucker with a big head. But Jesse looked looked cool as fuck though. He he got he got people. But Jesse was so respectful to me that the people that didn't like me were his friends and you know he just like he was all like he was cool with me he's like oh i got promoted to elite forces baby oh yeah we got to get promoted i think one more time and then we can move on and get to the next area wow this is the furthest i ever got damn special training and commando privilege nice oh 325 dollars a day damn Unlock's been promoted and you unlock Slurp and Burp Beverage Cooler. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I'm getting promoted. Awesome. So. Yeah, man. Like, uh. Yeah, so. So, Alyssa. Alyssa never talked to me or anything like that. But one day, I'm in PE with another group of kids. And. She, she comes up to me. This was a surprise to me. This fucking bitch 
She can't. Why? Out of all the people in my classroom, why would they send her to come get me from my other class? Because, see, I had to go to a different classroom to do uh, PE and Earth Science. And technically, I should have been in that class, but according to them, there was no room for me. Which I think was bullshit. I just think it's because they wanted to see if I was ready for regular ed instead of special ed. Because I was, I was in special ed classes with kids who, who didn't know how to read, who had, uh, who had reading problems. They had, uh, you know, emotional disturbances and stuff like that. We basically had classrooms next door to the children with special needs. And you know, I used to be a volunteer. Uh, I used to be a volunteer aide, uh, classroom aide for those kids. And it was just, you know, I just did little shit like help grade papers and kind of watched over them while the teacher was grading papers and stuff like that. So, so I had that experience. But, so I went out there for PE, which technically is gym. And Alyssa comes and she's just like, I was like, hi, Alyssa. Like, and she's just laughing at me and blushing. And I was like, what happened? Why are you here? And she's just like big smile on her face, blushing and, and, and just, just looking at me like, looking at me like, what the fuck? I was like, please talk to me. What's wrong? What's the matter? Please talk. I'm really talking like that. They're like, please talk. Please talk. And, and she said with the tiny squeaky voice, you have to go to class. And she didn't talk like that. I, I'm not cute. So I can't make that cute voice, but gotta go to class and my heart melted she ah, oh, my heart melted she spoke to me uh when i left for middle school it was like in my head i'm all like when she gets to middle school i'm gonna ask her out on a date i'm gonna do it never happened because my dumb ass failed school and i had to go to a different school Sad life, I know, sad fucking existence I have. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Wait till I tell you about the time I lived in Greek. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, we got promoted again to a drill instructor. Oh, yeah. I'm a drill instructor. Listen here, maggot. You drop it out on the floor and give me 20. Maggots. That's right. I'm going to turn you all into butterflies. Butterflies are caterpillars first, sir. Did I hear something? Get down on the floor and eat some dirt before I bust your skull open with my boot. So yeah, you pretty much have to get promoted just to get out of here. I think this is the last time. Look at this guy showing up in his cheap ass Lamborghini. And let's see, what's up with that cat outside? He's getting plowed in the Hey Mox, the place looks great. My dad can fill this place off in no time. Nice job. In fact, why don't you go in with me? Come on, let's go with you party pad. Dudley wants Mox to move in. Now you can visit the frat house and play your tube. Well, I don't play with other people, so who gives a fuck, right? Cool. What am I answering the phone for? This is exciting. I. This is the first time. Oh, see? Oh, I didn't know that. Just let my money do the talking, I guess. Wow, I didn't even know that. Wow. This is awesome! This is the first time I ever passed this. Wow. I can't believe it. This is the first time I've ever passed it. No. Oh, wow. We live right next... It's right next door to Mom's house? What the fuck? Wow. I guess we gotta stop the video here. I never made it this far. This is the first time. Party animals, huh? You know what? I've seen my uncle play this part. Long time ago, but that's the last time I ever did it. Because I remember... Oh, my God. I remember... Oh shit, I remember the fucking memory. I saw my uncle play this part. And he said, he said, oh, hey, welcome, welcome home, Marco. Because I used to come home from school, right? And they would, my grandma would drop me off in the house. My uncle's playing this. And he's like, guess what, Marco? I was like, what's up? He's like, oh, we're, I'm gonna, I'm at this party house, right? And we're gonna go find a girl and I'm gonna get in the hot tub with her naked. And I'm like, no way. He goes, yup. You want to see? I was like, fuck yeah. It was like a two-hour gameplay of him trying to get laid in the game. You see what I'm dealing with? I was like fucking 10 years old. and I See what I'm around? I was around sex and violence. But I'm not violent. <laughs> I'm a good person, I promise you.
I'm just I'm just very broken and alone and dead and I'm dead inside a little bit. But yeah, uh, I I did kind of go on a rant there talking about bullshit and about the game. But I, hey, it, this game brings back so many memories and it's making me happy. Uh, my apologies if you guys found uh, some of the things I was talking about a little disturbing. I'm just being real. I'm just being real with who I was, who I who I was back in those days. So my apologies too if it freaks you out that I'm calling old middle school crushes attractive it's you know what i mean it's not like i find them attractive be right now i haven't seen you know what i mean like it's not like that it's not i'm not trying to be a creep i'm just describing the feelings i had back in those days as of now i don't know where they are i hope they're okay i hope they're safe i hope they're healthy i'm pretty sure they're fucking adults and <laughs> i'm pretty sure their parents and stuff like that living their best lives that's all I want at the end of the day is them to live their best lives. I hope I get to see him again one day. I don't know how, but I got more I got more middle school stories, man. But yeah, that was a story about Samantha and the twins. But every time I thought about Samantha, I thought about Alyssa's face because Alyssa was the most prettiest girl. In, in, in my opinion, she was the most prettiest ever that I had a crush on. But there's more. There will be more stories because there's April. We gotta talk about April. <laughs> All these bitches. <laughs> All these bitches. Well, thank you guys for hanging out again. Again, please don't take this too seriously. It's all in fun and just telling a little bit about who I was. So, can't wait to get started on this one. Much love. Take care.